starts a, another stretch of five and seven for you guys. Um, are, are, is there a point where you're going to start looking at resting some guys, or does that just not seem possible given the fact you need wins? Um, our guys get rest when they get injured. <laughs> You've had too much rest from some for some guys then. Yeah, so you know some guys, you know, like Lonnie's gotten a lot of rest, uh, but. You know, there are some guys you, you worry about, like DeMar, for sure. Uh, you know, he's given getting all those minutes every night. So at some point, he's probably going to have to take a blow here and there. How did you think Lonnie looked the other night, considering he hadn't played in a few weeks? Yeah, I thought he was fine. You know, I was a little bit, uh, you know, concerned, mostly uh, how aggressive he'd be. You know, just getting back into the flow and uh, wondering how confident he would be. But I thought he was fine, and uh, he didn't get – banged again at all uh, on that wrist. So he's he's ready to go. And I guess one more question that's probably dumb even by my standards, but have you seen, have you happened to catch Boban's uh, commercial for gold goldfish crackers? First, you got to give yourself more credit, but <laughs> I have not. I haven't seen his commercial. I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll want to see it now because he's a hoot for sure. Uh, obviously it's hilarious. Like the, the, um, the year you had him, does it not surprise you that he's developed this reputation as being one of the great locker room guys in the NBA? Oh, not at all. He's a very special individual uh, from day one. You know, when we brought him, uh, he was a team favorite and a fan favorite for sure. He's a loving, loving man. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Let's go to Chuck Cooperstein from Mavericks Radio. Hey, Pop, uh, I know you've got bigger fish to fry right now, just as it relates to your team. But I was wondering, how have you been able to or have you been able to, to do a, any work on the Olympic stuff and USA basketball stuff? And uh, how, how does that all work for you as you try to get ready to take on that role, which I know means so much to you? Uh, it's, it's always there. Uh, I probably think about it every day in some way, shape or form. Uh, so, you know, the preparation, uh, you know, started a while back, but uh, from designing, you know, what you might want to do offensively or defensively with uh, 50 different uh, <laughs> versions of what the team might be, because you have no clue, uh, you know, who's going to be able to go and who's going to want to go. Uh, so that, that takes up a lot of time, but uh, there's also, you know, watching film of the teams that we're going to be playing uh, once once we get there. Uh, and then all the administrative type things that, you know, you talk to the USA basketball people, you know, Jerry and Sean Ford uh, to, you know, hash all that out. Uh, luckily, they've done it a million times and they're brilliant at it, so I don't have to do much. I just kind of listen. So would you say basically it's like almost like, Three, uh, half your day, less than half your day, but I mean, but there's, a, but there's uh, something every day. Yeah, I, I don't spend a half a day on it, uh, yeah. you know, but there's, it's always there. You know, Coach K told me that's the way it would be, and uh, that it would always be on my mind. You know, it's a, it's a huge responsibility, and uh, you want to do a good job, so uh, you do everything you can to make sure you're prepared for when the time comes. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Chuck. Let's go to Isaac Harris from Mavericks.com. Coach, Maxi Kleba has been in the league uh, four seasons now. And I'm just seeing from your point of view, how have you seen Maxi progress as a player? And what do you like about him as a player? Well, you know, I think you can talk to Rick more about his progression because I don't know, you know, what he was like when he first got here. You know, his coaches would know that way better than me. Uh, but he's, you know, turned into a very confident shooter. Uh, he knows his role. Uh, he fits well with that group. Rick uses him wisely. Uh, so he's, he's found a home. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Isaac. Let's go to Brad Townsend from Mavericks TV. Do I have to? <laughs> hey, Pop. Hi, Brad. Uh, great to see you. Uh, Are we going to get together or what? Uh, yeah, I'm in the arena. Uh, at the same time, our job. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of the marks of your uh, franchise's uh, sustained excellence is, you know, nearly two dozen division titles. 
I wondered these days though, how much emphasis, if any, do you place on the division standings? And do you think the NBA gives enough weight to a division winner in terms of playoff seating? Uh, That's all mouthful, sorry. Okay, I haven't thought about division titles in 20 years. This never enters my head. Interesting, okay, that's fine, thanks. Yep. All right, we'll wrap things up with Eddie Sefko. Eddie. Jeez, all these guys from the past, unbelievable. <laughs> Great. We're, we're, we're about as old as we can get right now. So, uh, uh, Tom, I'm wondering, do you have a uh, feeling one way or the other on the play-in games? And, you know, are they a good thing or a bad thing or – I mean, obviously they're good for if you're if you're at ninth or tenth, but uh, in general, what's your thought on on that? You know, Eddie, I got to tell you, you know, the same answer to those kinds of questions. Uh, I give it no thought whatsoever uh, at my age because I have to pick and choose how I want to spend my thinking moments, and it wouldn't matter what I think. The NBA is going to do what they want to do, so you just move forward, and whatever you got to do, you do it. I'm sticking to it. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Coach Pop. Okay. Take care.